Yes, go ahead. Okay, ju uh, ju I just want to say if you have some questions in the meanwhile, please already leave it in the, in the chat so that uh, at the end we will pick up those questions and uh, start the question answering. Okay, please go ahead. Thank you. Oh, okay, uh, welcome back. Uh, previous, previously, I have introduced the multimodal knowledge discovery, uh, especially multimodal entity and uh, relation extraction, and uh, I introduced uh, two models. HVPNet and uh, MKG former and uh, one toolkit uh, called DeepKE, which can support uh, multimodal entity and multimodal relation extraction, and also uh, a document level or low resource and name entity recognition and uh, uh, relation extraction. And here uh, I will then introduce multimodal inference. Yeah. And uh, uh, at first I will ask a question, and uh, uh, this is a very deep question. Uh, is is the multimodal context really helpful? Uh, this is a very interesting question because if we do not know uh, whether the multimodal context is really helpful, uh, it is it, it 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 is very it is very important. So yes or no? Actually, uh, in uh, some period study, uh, such as this EMLP uh, two uh, thousand and eighteen uh, paper. Uh, the author uh, present an adversarial evaluation uh, method to uh, directly examine the utility of the image data in multimodal uh, the multimodal machine translation. Uh, this is a very interesting paper. Uh, the evaluation me measures whether a multimodal translation system perform better. Uh, given either the uh, congruent image or even a random incongruent, incongruent image, uh, in addition to the correct source language sentence. Uh, actually, uh, they propose uh, this uh, adversarial evaluation method to determine uh, whether this model, uh, multimodal translation system are aware of the visual uh, context. Uh, they introduce a measure of image awareness uh, awareness to uh, quantify the difference in performance in uh, those two settings uh, when a system is presented with a uh, congruent visual data or uh, when it is presented with incongruent uh, uh, incongruent uh, visual data uh, in both these settings uh, a system is presented with the correct uh, source language uh, text sentence and uh, from this figure uh, uh, see this figure for an illustration of this uh, evaluation. Uh, the hypothesis that if a system is aware of the visual context, uh, that is to say, it is actually using this image for translation, uh, then the system uh, will perform better when it is presented with the congruent visual data than this incongruent visual data. Actually, this, the main finding of this paper is that uh, in one public available multimodal translation system, uh, the, it is not aware of the uh, congruent image data. And this finding raises doubt about uh, whether those SOTA state of art multimodal translation uh, systems actually use this visual context to produce better translations. So, this is a very interesting paper. They raise doubts. Another NACO paper, and uh, also they probe this contribution uh, of the uh, visual modality of those uh, state of art uh, neural machine translation models uh, by conducting a systematic systematic analysis uh, where they partially derive the models from source side textual correct context, and their results also indicate that under very limited textual uh, context, uh, the model are maybe the model are capable of leveraging the video video input to generate better uh, translations. And uh, uh, several previous empirical findings seem to indicate that images are uh, even ignored by this model and uh, hint at the fact that this is due to some uh, representation or modeling limitations. And uh, they also conject that the most uh, plausible reason for the linguistic dominant is that uh, in some data sets or uh, maybe some multi uh, multi model data sets, uh, 
uh, the source text, the source text is, is sufficient to perform perform the translation. Uh, they argue that the text is enough, and eventually preventing the visual information from intervening the uh, learning process. Uh, they also uh, in this paper they also invest investigate this hypothesis. Uh, they introduced several input uh, degradation regime and uh, revisited those uh, state-of-art uh, neural machine translation models to assess their to assess their behavior under uh, the degraded regimes. And uh, they further probe they further prob probe the visual sensitivity by deliberately feeding some features from very very un unrated images or some random images. Uh, their results, as shown in this figure, show that. Uh, those neural machine translation models uh, successfully exploit the visual modality when the uh, linguistic context is very scarce. Uh, this is very important. Uh, this is a very important conclusion. But indeed, it tends to be less sensitive to this modality when they are exposed to very complete sentence, which which indicates uh, not all visual information are important are necessary. And this also contradicts with uh, the current uh, belief that neural machine mod neural machine translation models disregard the uh, the visual modality because of because either of the quality of the image features or uh, the way they are integrated into the model. And for a uh, multi-model knowledge graph, uh, especially knowledge graphs are often include some uh, rich visual context, uh, usually some uh, images of uh, profile photos. Uh, thumbnails and posters, and uh, in this figure uh, also demonstrated that image examples of entities in uh, knowledge graphs, and uh, each entity has uh, multiple. Even some entities have multiple images and also uh, many irrele irrelevant images. Uh, but they also describe the appearance or behaviors of this entity. However, uh, it is very. It is still not uncle not clear uh, to what extent uh, uh, truly multimodal reasoning is required for uh, those current uh, multimodal uh, inference tasks or multimodal data sets. Uh, for instance, uh, it has been pointed out that uh, many uh, uh, unimodal natural language processing models can perform the same well with uh, without any understanding of the visual contact than uh, the multimodal uh, counterpart. So uh, the, this question became, becomes, is those visual contexts really helpful for these multimodal knowledge graph problems? Okay, uh, so apparently uh, how to fully exploit those visual information uh, is one of the core issues in multimodal knowledge graph inference scenarios. And which can directly impact the uh, model performance. Um, uh, Professor uh, Meng Wang, uh, he has focused on answering this question from the multimodal knowledge graph representation learning, and uh, uh, have published uh, one paper, ASMMM 2021. And uh, I will introduce this following work. Uh, note that the current multimodal knowledge graph representing learning methods have brought. Uh, extent improvement, and uh, most of them assume that the learned embeddings are expected to be uh, better since the visual modality intuitively uh, contributes to the uh, complementary or uh, supplementary those in context. Uh, this assumption may be challenged because images may also introduce noise and uh, lead to uncertainty about whether the visual context really improves the embedding quality. For instance, as shown in this figure, the images of ac academic award for best actress and uh, academic award will be beneficial for learning the reputation of category. However, as a contrast in this figure, in the, in the, in the, in the bottom figure, and the uh, images of NCAA MOP and uh, 2020 NCAA men's uh, division do not have any visual similarity or semantic correlation, which will have unwelcome influence on the representation learning of the uh, season, relation season. So, therefore, uh, directly adding the visual information to the traditional knowledge graph embeddings 
may cause may cause negative effect and uh, corruptions. So, uh, in uh, Mon Wang's work, uh, they studied uh, what to, what what extent and the circumstance uh, that visual context is indeed in knowledge graph uh, knowledge graph problems, and they found that maybe the key is the relation. They design a novel model named uh, RSFE, uh, which takes relation circumstance into account and uh, utilizes an MRP a metric in a uh, forget gate to selectively uh, filter uh, visual information during knowledge graph embedding learning. They also explore the impact of different uh, visual feature encoders for the multimodal knowledge graph representation learning. Uh, which is empirically is empirically important, but ignored by those previous embedding models. And here is this proposed model RSME, and which composed of three gates and a basic knowledge graph embedding model. Uh, the filter gate and the forget gate run in different stages and uh, have different functions. Specifically, uh, the filter gate. Uh, deals with the noise at the dataset level, uh, which is very common. Um, for example, uh, the images in uh, a well-known dataset FB uh, 15K uh, image dataset uh, are obtained by the search engine without manual ver verifications. So uh, they are often parts of the images in the dataset uh, that are completely completely unrated or they are completely wrong uh, unrated to the knowledge graph entity. Uh, the goal of uh, the filter gate is to eliminate these wrong images and uh, the forget gate deal with the noise at the task level. And this is because even if the dataset is precisely constructed, uh, we call, call this the images of each entity are rated to the entity, there is still a very uh, important problem uh, that is say the visual information is not always meaningful for specific KG or knowledge graph tasks. So it's what, uh, if the deep semantic information of images is actually extracted by the image encoder for the knowledge graph uh, inference or knowledge graph completion task, uh, the forget gate is designed to remove the harmful meaningless images for the task. So considering this all in scenario, the model uh, to, uh, needs three images for each the task of knowledge graph completion. If there are 10, of more images of an image in the data and uh, uh, the field gate will select uh, the top three out of 10 images. And then based on the target average and the gap gate will decide whether to increase or weaken the visual formation of these three images of the model's prediction. And it is worth mentioning that uh, in the third images, apart from uh, there may be some images related to the entities and the uh, income the follow-up knowledge graph construct completion task because the forget gate only takes a small number of high quality images as uh, the for experiment. This table provides the experimental result on the link prediction. Uh, on the it can be seen that uh, the performance of ISME out of all, uh, all of all the other models, and uh, the difference between the ISME uh, with VIT bit and the ISME without image groups is very significant, uh, which demonstrated that uh, the introduction of the visual context. Uh, do has some help. Uh, it, it the visual, visual information is very important and can uh, take and have the advantage. Uh, in addition, uh, the comparison between ISME, ISME, ISME with the VIT and ISME with VIT plus forget also imply that the forget gate does have a further improvement in most cases. And uh, moreover, 
the authors also find that as the number of triple uh, contents in the relation increase, uh, the image efficient rate also gradually increase. It may lead to the conclusion that the more uh, the more complex the data is and uh, the more benefit from the visual information. Uh, this is also a very interesting conclusion and uh, interesting imp uh, empirical finding. And uh, I think this is these findings may help and also may so also inspire many future works. And in the right table, uh, different relations have uh, different uh, MRPs, uh, which indicates that uh, different relations may have different uh, sensitivities to uh, visual information, uh, which indicates uh, the key is uh, maybe the key is the relation. And there are some relations that uh, active uh, moieties uh, can uh, make good use of the visual information, such as uh, active moieties and uh, river mouth. Uh, by analyzing uh, the relations, uh, uh, the authors also find that uh, active moieties is a reflexible uh, reflexive relation, and uh, most entities on uh, river mouth have visual or checkable or visual checkable images. Uh, as a contrast, the accuracy, the accuracy of uh, the accuracy of the abstract uh, relations, uh, such as uh, judge, uh, those those are very abstract relations, such as just are uh, is relatively low. So this is also another very interesting uh, empirical finding. Uh, the uh, the 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 multimodal contest, uh, the key may be the relation. So I think more works can be uh, investigated to study, in, investigate whether there are also other 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 clues or other 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 information which is important for uh, multimodal knowledge graph inference. Okay. Uh, recently, uh, we also evaluated uh, RS, RS Macy's work on a real world multimodal uh, knowledge graph data set called OpenBG IMG. And uh, this data set is developed by the Alibaba Group, uh, which contains many uh, real-world multimodal uh, factual knowledge, uh, such as uh, products, uh, place, uh, brands, or categories, uh, things, markets, or some uh, fine-grained markets, uh, which are all very important knowledge for e-commerce uh, for e-commerce business, as shown in figure uh, in the in the in, uh, on the on the right. And you can uh, obtain all those data on at the GitHub, uh, uh, OpenBG benchmark uh, GitHub. And uh, 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 but uh, different from those uh, benchmark data sets such as Freebase FB fifteen uh, K and uh, other other uh, wiki data, uh, this this OpenBG uh, IMG data set uh, there is there are some some noise in this data set because it is a, it is a real world knowledge graph and uh, from not it is a knowledge graph built from uh, build build based on those uh, those are uh, user 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 uh, user user information uh, and some some part of some part of uh, product information uh, this and uh, some uh, some part of seeing uh, uh, seeing information on the product and uh, categories so there may be some noise and uh, this is a uh, this is a uh, difference from uh, uh, from, from from some uh, other knowledge graph such as the wiki data and the free base and you can uh, also find that uh, with these to get uh, the model isme and uh, it can obtain uh, better performance than uh, some uh, other uh, multimodal knowledge graph reputation models such as uh, trans ae uh, which further demonstrated that uh, the effectiveness of the model and also demonstrated that, that not all uh, not all uh, visual information is uh, is helpful because in our data set in our uh, OpenBG image data set uh, the there are lots of uh, unrated uh, irrelevant uh, images uh, uh, of of the product so uh, the model may work work very well for this scenario and we also can find uh, the mkg former i mentioned uh, in the previous section mkg former is the uh, is the model of uh, multimodal knowledge knowledge graph uh, knowledge graph not multimodal uh, multimodal model with transformer uh, we can find that uh, the mkg former also obtain uh, a comparable performance with RMSSE, but uh, MKG former is a, a transformer based model, but ISME is a very uh, simple model. Uh, so uh, we can conclude that in such very noisy scenario, uh, maybe some very simple model can also obtain better performance. 
uh, but in some uh, very clean data set, uh, maybe transformer based model can obtain very, uh, very, very, very good performance. But uh, this is not this is not this may be due to different data sets. So uh, it also need to uh, some further investigation. Okay. So uh, for multimodal inferences, uh, also uh, uh, many other works, um, such as this work, uh, such work, this work of uh, multimodal attribute expression, and uh, uh, in this work, uh, they uh, they build a product set up data set with images, uh, text, and uh, and uh, structured uh, not 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 structured knowledge aligned, and uh, uh, this work also uh, used a supervised method to train a classifier to predict the missing attributes. Uh, however, uh, this uh, the data advantages of this approach is the need of uh, fine grained uh, annotations, and uh, uh, this is also very common for some uh, multimodal knowledge inference and inference tasks because uh, they have to annotate lots of lots of data. And uh, so, I think uh, uh, some low resource or few short models for multimodal knowledge graph knowledge graph inference or multimodal knowledge completion is very necessary and uh, uh, beneficial. And uh, there are another work uh, which employs a generative model for uh, multimodal uh, knowledge inference. Uh, specifically, uh, this model. Uh, this 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 model use a uh, generative question answering model, which is used to, which is used to uh, con construct some questions for the missing attribute information, and uh, then uh, the questions and the product information are jointly uh, delivered to a question answering model uh, to answer, and. Uh, uh, the output structure of the question answering model is the uh, missing attribute. Uh, but the uh, advantages of this approach it is it can reduce the reliance of the fine grained uh, data annotations. So uh, it can uh, use that, uh, use few, uh, only a few uh, annotated a few fine grained data annotations. Uh, this is the advantages, and. Uh, uh, I think uh, this model is very helpful for those uh, low resource scenarios or friction scenarios and uh, uh, and uh, with with this generative question answering model and uh, 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 maybe um, a very well performed uh, multi model uh, knowledge knowledge inference uh, can be developed uh, for uh, in use for for real world usage. Okay, uh, that's uh, that's my part of that's my part of. Uh, uh, multimodal uh, knowledge inference and uh, uh, next uh, professor uh, uh, Wang Meng Wang will introduce the uh, last part last part uh, the challenges uh, so uh, welcome uh, professor uh, Meng Wang yeah Good moment sorry and uh, thank you professor Zhang On my screen, the top. Can you hear me, Professor Zhang? Yeah, I can, I can see you. Okay. So the final part is about the challenges and the future uh, chance for our research. Mm. Uh, let's review the first part. Uh, at the beginning of this talk, uh, we want to build a multi-modern knowledge graph for the applications. And uh, uh, it consists of three parts. 
The first is passing the text into a struct semantic graph. We call it the text graph. And the second one is passing the images videos to a struct graph. We call it the sense graph. And we alignment or make an alignment or we grounding the entity or events to uh, between these two graphs or and uh, across the modalities. And uh, in these processes, uh, we have some challenges. The first one is the, the uh, annotation cost is is really high, and uh, the training data is really limited, and uh, especially in some uh, specific domains such as the the medical or the lawyer or the financial. We know that the uh, labeling this data is is, is really high expensive. The, and the second one is the uh, computation complex complexity is that the we know that the, uh, the, the we make we make some reading or we make some learning between the uh, the different different uh, multi modalities is 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 really high and uh, the third one is uh, the limited fixed vocabulary uh, this this is means that the um, we know in the general neural graph, uh, before we construct the graph, we define some uh, ontologies such as the, the, the schema of the relationships. Uh, and uh, then we extract, uh, we extract or discover these uh, entities and uh, uh, the, the relationships. But we, um, but, uh, but for the multimodal neural graph, we, we even don't have a, uh, uh, uh multimodal uh, ontology and uh, and especially for the relationships we don't have uh, the the cross modal uh, schema yeah so we need to define the, the, uh, the what kind of semantic relationship we uh, across the, the modalities we want to discover and uh, the the last one is the the abstract concept are not not it, it is difficult to to make the the the, the grounding and this is an interesting challenge because let, let's recall our uh, example in the photo of Yao Ming and and Tracy McGrady and uh, the text description is that uh, Yao Ming and McGrady uh, visit, visited Beijing and uh, in 2004 and uh, in this text, we know that the Yao Ming and Ma Tracy McGrady can can be grounded in the picture, yeah. But uh, in the text, we have another entity. It is the Beijing. We know Beijing in this picture is relative uh, 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 abstract concept. Yeah, maybe you, you think that the, the Beijing is uh, is a concrete entity in the general KG, but uh, Beijing in the text in this picture is we, we and in the picture we cannot find a, 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 a real entity or a object in the picture to link to the text entities. So this is called the abstract concept and it and the groundable issues. And this is just a, some specific challenges, but actually, when you building a, a multimodal knowledge graph or make some multimodal learning tasks, before you meeting the the challenge I just mentioned, uh, some real challenge will will you you will feel. And uh, the first one is the data. And uh, actually, uh, if you want to do the multimodal knowledge discovery first you should have the multimodal data and actually uh, i have some students they they, they, they told me that the, the professor and uh, i just have the kg and uh, i don't have any videos or features uh, or, or pictures and some speeches uh, how, how can i find the data so so if you want to do some multimodal research problem and you should ask yourself do you have do you really have the multimodal data? If you don't you if you don't have and you should should to collect this multimodal data by yourself and uh, this is really uh, time consuming. And uh, the next one is the uh, 
the knowledge representation theory. And we know that uh, in the knowledge representation uh, field, we actually we really need uh, some some traditional uh, KR researchers to think about this problem. And the, uh, that means we should do some research about the boundary, the the, the multimodal care and what kind of knowledge can be represented by the symbolic knowledge and what kind of knowledge should be just represented by the, the neural embeddings or neural representations. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the, the, the second one is uh, we, we need to, to define some schema or we need to define some new schemas about the spatial or temporal or physical multimodal knowledges and uh, and uh, such as uh, the event and the rules across uh, multimodal uh, across modalities should also be uh, think about what kind of knowledge representation is suitable for for, for this knowledge and actually uh, I I have I haven't seen the 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 the, uh, the, the new uh, research about these issues and the third one is the we know what we are processing the the multimodal knowledge, and it, it means that uh, uh, it means you need to do some machine learning task for the traditional KR researchers. And this, uh, I can tell you that the 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 pre-trained multimodal multi language models is a, a really new uh, how to how to train the uh, multimodal language models. Is really difficult, and just uh, Professor Zhang has told you how to do it. And uh, the second one is that uh, we, when we when you want when you do the multimodal represent representation learning, you should have the cross modal alignment alignment uh, labeled data. Yeah, and uh, the last one is uh, that uh, that means you uh, we know that the machine learning require. Re require higher computing power, and this this means you need to support. They need some support from your lab or your university uh, computing resources, rather than being uh, to complete some experiment or or task on your own laptop. Yeah, and this is a real challenge. So before you do the researches about multimodal knowledge discovery or multimodal knowledge graph, you should think about uh, this is really uh, challenging and uh, and maybe it can help you to think about your problem. And uh, here I want to show you some feature opportunities about this area. The first one is I want to talk about the, the representation view of and from the uh, KR representation and the machine learning or the neural representation about the multimodal knowledge. Uh, so the first one is the KR uh, representation uh, as researchers. We know that uh, she actually, actually before uh, people do some uh, neural, uh, neural embeddings or multimodal representation learning, uh, the, the symbolic uh, or, or the traditional KR researchers has, uh, has has contacted some researchers about the multimodal knowledge representation. Uh, the first work is the last column. We know that that is a, it is a concept con knowledge for the multimedia, and it is done by the uh, IBM, CMU, and the Columbia University researchers. And in this work and the CYC, the knowledge, uh, the, the, the knowledge the knowledge base is. And is 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 used in many academic uh, research groups, and uh, so the researchers want to construct a, a taxonomy of about a, a one thousand uh, multimedia concept uh, to describe the broadcast new videos, and uh, and uh, but in the last column, a number of uh, a number a many uh, um, concept. Uh, uh, it, 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 it is just uh, uh, about the new videos and uh, have no holiday about the relationships. So, so the next work to come, uh, it is the uh, it is a multimodal ontology launched by the uh, the researcher from Germany and the Netherlands and the Portugal. The, the the main motivation is that uh, the last come uh, 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 yes. 
so some relation is missing. So they 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 define a new uh, ontology based on the MPEG seven, and uh, this is the but but this we know that the, this two ontology is is construct is constructed by the expert manually, and uh, so so uh, so uh, so the uh, this data is, is this not based are not well developed. In the past years, and uh, here are some uh, new multimodal uh, node graphs data set. The first one is DBP. We know that uh, besides the, the construct knowledge, that also have some images in this in this KG and Wikidata and ImageP and MMKG and the KG Bench. The, the two years ago published in the ESWC, and I, I really like this this data set because KGBench uh, contains some uh, the 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 minimal uh, uh, neural embeddings by 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 the models, and uh, our work is uh, the Richpedia and uh, and uh, another interesting uh, interesting work uh, knowledge knowledge data science is the knowledge forest, and uh, it is a specific domain about the education by Xi'an Jiao Tong's uh, university's researchers. And uh, the last one is uh, Baidu KG, and uh, we know that uh, they have imported the many uh, text, images, videos, and speeches in their domain. And uh, and uh, uh, I, I I will give the, the uh, a key word about the current. Uh, 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 multimodal knowledge graph uh, knowledge graph is the uh, cross modal cross modal relations. It means that uh, if you want to do some multimodal knowledge graphs work, uh, I I suggest you to focus on the uh, cross modal relations uh, def definition and the discovery. And uh, from the uh, machine learning uh, view, we know that uh, a very good paper is. Published uh, at we transaction on PAMI and uh, about the uh, multimodal machine learning and uh, uh, the 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 core cool idea is to map the data source uh, from uh, of each modality into the same uh, same same vector space or embedding space for the representation and uh, to do this learning they they, they need the the the, uh, the fine grid alignment labeled data. And uh, another method is to do some co-training representation, uh, representation learning is to project each model um, data into their independent space. But uh, during the learning, and the different spaces have some uh, constraints. And uh, uh, based on this, and uh, we know that uh, the pre-trained language model has uh, has developed uh, has uh, uh, developed very fast in recent years, and uh, in two thousand and nineteen, and the well bought and it was proposed. After that, we can see so many multimodal pre-trained language model has been proposed, such as the Oscar or VL bot and uh, image bot. And uh, I can give you some. Uh, uh, the the keyword about this this uh, research works. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, contrastive learning, and the second one is uh, uh, the pro promote improved, and the, the third one is the few short problem, and uh, and another two uh, interesting uh, interesting task is the efficiency and the effect uh, effect analysis. And uh, but the most important is that uh, all this. Uh, Pre-trained multimodal language model is one to for is one to do some fine grained representation learning. So if you want to do the multimodal representation learning, I suggest I suggest you to focus on the fine grained multimodal representation learning. And uh, this is the uh, some chances from the KR and uh, the machine learning view, and then. Uh, another view is about the common sense reading, and uh, uh, this is the uh, Yan Jin Zhou from the career, and uh, we know that she is the she is good at the natural language processing and the common sense mining, and uh, I really like this uh, example, and uh, she 
um, pro uh, provide for us. The, the, this is uh, a picture of about the two months are running, and uh, rather than standing on the field, and uh, uh, you can see that uh, there the have there are two months in the in this in this image, and uh, we know that uh, one is chasing another, and uh, uh, one. Chaser, uh, chaser. The, the chaser is has the host intentions, and the the chased one is afraid. Even though the, we can see that uh, these two faces are, are are actually completely the same in the picture, and but uh, uh, but in the our in, in our hand and in our uh, brain, we we understand this uh, these two same two same faces in about two different uh, semantic. Uh, uh, under uh, semantic meanings, so, so, uh, uh Yin do some symbolic and uh, uh, neural works about uh, just uh, motiv motiv motivated by the uh, the examples. The first one is uh, a good paper about the symbolic knowledge distillation from the pre-trained language model, and they find some, uh, uh some some interesting uh, common sense rules from based on the GPT-3 or other uh, big model. And another one is they use the, the neural um, script to manage some 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 common sense from the videos. And uh, I, I really suggest you to uh, read the Yan Jin Zhu's work about the symbolic, symbolic and neural systems. And uh, uh, another view is about the service uh, view uh, is about computer vision, and we know in this in this field uh, the Li Fei Fei is really uh, is a is a famous scientist, and uh, uh, she introduced uh, uh, she's idea about the multimodal uh, research is from the the tree of life by dive, and uh, the, the Einstein tells us that the uh, uh, when we do the research, we need a north star, and the north star is important. Uh, is sometimes important than the problem itself. So, in the next uh, ten years for the CV, the Li Fei want to focus is uh, the 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 em embodied embodied uh, the, the the problem, and uh, this is a, a, a interest interesting uh, psychology. Uh, experiment and uh, uh, Li Fei Fei introduced for us. And in this experiment, as shown in the figure, and uh, one of two uh, kitchens and I in a, in a cage, and uh, one of them can actually uh, explore the outside world, and another one is followed by the by this mechanism, and uh, uh, just uh, have the looking of the uh, the external world uh, by another kitchen, and so the result shows that the the the, the nervous system of the two chickens are, are different after a few works, and the the kitchens in the in the past uh, in, in in the past have uh, fail, failing to to form or develop a full uh, functional uh, sens sensory system, but the kitchens in the active uh, is 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 really healthy and uh, can do the uh, the formal uh, function. So so uh, so it means the embodied um, problem or the field, uh, 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 research direction is uh, uh, important uh, uh, opportunities for you to do the uh, multiple diagnosis discovery. And uh, another one is the. Uh, uh, data set view, uh, the database view. We know that the in the database uh, researchers and the people also do some multimodal uh, multimodal work. And uh, the famous is that they do the the vector querying or searching the embeddings in the in a high dimensional. And this is really uh, interesting and important for for us to learn about. Is that uh, we know that. Uh, is uh, if we uh, we know that we we need to uh, do the multimodal representation uh, representation learning, uh, uh, and we will project uh, different uh, uh, model data into a same space and uh, to get uh, multimodal embeddings. But uh, the high dimensional multimodal embeddings is usually 
the, the distrib the distributions are usually not uh, unbalanced and you can see uh, in these dif distributions and uh, and uh, the real data is is is, is not uh, random and it has some uh, some some such as the ghost uh, distribution and uh, when we well, when we search in this uh, imbalance vector space we need to do some new index index construction or index learning models and uh, it can help you to to search in some knowledge or searching do some uh, do some such as the sparkle uh, learning uh, searching workers you sh you should do the high dimensional similar to carrying processing problem and this is about the uh, database view and the next view is the <coughs> Internet of Things view, and we know that uh, this is by the follower in the KDD two thousand and twenty one, uh, and she concludes some some important points about this this, this multi model problem. The, the first one is the data collection, and the second one is the the data pre processing, and uh, the, the 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 third one is the future extraction of selection and the the machine learning. Uh, models and uh, finally uh, evaluations and uh, the key word in the in this part is, is the, the data collection is the the biggest challenge in this in this problem and uh, because we know that our data is uh, distributed different uh, uh, different uh, uh, IoT and such as the mobiles or, or in a car or in some uh, some land senses and so so in this in this in this field i think the the com i think a good representation from the multi-model such data is really important thing at the first a second one is we should to uh, generalize uh, the reference learning models and uh, because we should transfer uh, tra transfer our model from one field one field to another field and uh, with the the late with with un unsupervised model or a similar supervised model and uh, so mm, the, 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 the finally we, we should fix for, solve the, the time series segmentation problem and uh, uh, self supervised super learning models and the trust learning from the with the contextual information and the, the key word I, uh, I will tell you is the segmentation in this in the IoT fields and another for papers <coughs> It also show us the 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 the, the, sim, the similar important uh, directions such as the segmentation and the self supervised learning and the context information and uh, uh, another view is about the uh, human com uh, compute uh, computing interaction view and the HR, HCR view and uh, this is an important uh, paper about uh, the how to do creativity in design with the, the human engaged AI and uh, about the multi-modal knowledge. And uh, she gave us some important uh, keyword is the segmentation, uh, spatial, and uh, the temporal information. So uh, after that, I, wa I want to ask, uh, I, want to, uh, I want to you to think about this, uh, this problem and the multimodal uh, multimodal information is really just as a different uh, images text or videos or structured information when i do, do the when i do the multimodal uh, knowledge construct uh, research work another professor from our medical school uh, told, told me that uh, the multimodal research which such problem is a uh, old problem is a uh, old task in there in, in their research works because he told me that the uh, different images have actually actually is different multimodal data and this is in, in really uh, inspired me and because in the past i just think that all images are same and all text are same and all the tab table data or structured data are same and which i should to use the similar models to 
pro process the, the the image and the, the, the text and the 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 structure data. But I but actually for a, a uni model model data such as the visual data we have such as the 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 map data and the the the, the simply figures data or some some MCR data and so on. So if you if you have if you just have the text data or niche language data, I think you should maybe maybe just for the niche language text, we should also find some multi-model different representations about the text. So so let 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 us make a conclusion. And in the future, I think the 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 first one is the important is the fan grid and the segmentations in the IoT view. And another one is the symbolic and the neural models, which would make them uh, complementary. And uh, we should we should define more semantic relations and more uh, we should focus on how to search in bindings or conduct vector querying about uh, the relations and the entities in the n-dimensional multimodal embeddings, and we should also think about the, the embodied learning or embodied problem about the neural and uh, symbolic systems. And all this may be about the multimodal knowledge discovery. And uh, so that's all about the multimodal knowledge graph uh, or multimodal knowledge discovery inferring and uh, challenges about today's talk and uh, you can ask some problem some questions um, 